Today, we are going to take a two-way table like this, a two-way table, okay? Two categorical var variables looked at at the same time. And we're going to see if there's an association between the two variables. Here's the first example. We have the survival of patients with coronary heart disease and pet ownership. We're wondering if there is an association between having a pet and living longer with coronary heart disease. Or if there's no association. Maybe if you own a pet, it doesn't mean you're going to live longer. Okay? That's the question. On the other page, flip it over. We have women of a certain age and the satisfaction they, are, they have with their overall appearance. Okay? We are wondering if your age and your satisfaction with your overall appearance is associated. If you're younger, do you feel more satisfied? Or if you're older, do you feel more satisfied? We're wondering if there's an association, okay? I don't know, but a chi-square test will be able to tell us. Now, here's the key. Just like in the one-way table in the goodness of fit test, we need expected values. Now, the expected values are going to be a little bit different than how we did it. In the expected values of the previous goodness of fit test, we did kind of like proportions times totals. This time, it's going to be different. Our expected values that we're going to see is going to be like a weighted average. It comes from multiplying our row, our column, and our grand total. Uh, and dividing by a grand total, okay? Our null and alternative hypothesis will always be the same every single time we have this two-way table. Our null hypothesis is that there is no association between the two variables. Our alternative hypothesis is there is an association between the two variables. If I get a low p-value, that means it is unlikely for the two things they are expected values to be the same as our actual values, which means most likely it's going to be something different than the expected, uh, which, which means there is an association. Okay, low p-value means there is an association. Uh, we're doing this association independence test it's for two categorical variables. We'll see if there is an association. Okay. Now, it's important, though, Finding an association using this chi-square test does not imply causation. They might be associated, but we do not know if one's going to cause the other. So there might be a relationship between owning a pet and living longer, but we cannot say definitively, oh, you have a coronary heart disease? Here, buy a pet. You're definitely going to live longer. There could be other factors at play, okay? Now, how are we going to do this test? Well, it's very easy. It's actually easier than the goodness of fit test. I'll show you why. You're going to enter in this information into a matrix. So, second matrix. If you have something in A or B, whatever, just select it, and you can change it. Oh, don't select it. So, matrix is above uh, X inverse. Remember, don't go to names to edit things, go to edit to edit things, select matrix A. Is everybody at matrix? Are we good? Go to edit. Edit A. Now, remember, it is rows by columns. Two by two. I want a two by two. Enter. Then I'm going to write over what I have in here. 28, 50, 11, 3. We're going to compare those values to expected values. Now, how do I find an expected value? It's the row times the column divided by the grand total. So 
let's say I want to find the expected value for somebody who's alive after one year with this heart disease and does not own a pet. Well, I would need this row, this column, and a total. So this row, 28 plus 50, is 78. This column, 28 plus 11, is 39. This total would be 78 plus 14. The total is 92. So I need the row, the column, and the number. So that'll give me my expected value for this spot right here. I'm going to do expected value for plus one year and no pet. It'll be the column 39 times the row 78 divided by 92. Go ahead and do that calculation in your home screen. Get out of your matrix, second quit. Second quit. And do this calculation, 39 times 78 divided by 92. It's like a weighted average. It's right there. It's how you find kind of the expected. Uh, not kind of. It is how you find the expected. So you get 33.065, okay? So you write that down. That's your expected value for that one. Now we could do this three other times, and we could write down the expected values, and then in matrix B, we could include all of these expected values. But, if we didn't want to do that, which we don't because it's a lot of calculations, we can just go to stat test and run our chi-square test. This chi-square test is for a two-way table. The goodness of fit is for that one-way table, observe expected. If we just press enter here, now observed is A, expected they say is B. Well, if we found all these expected values and we plugged them in B, boom, that would be fine. But if we have just something that is not the same size, so right now matrix B, if I look at matrix B, it's a 3 by 4. Since it's not the same size as A, your calculator is actually going to remove this matrix, or if it was blank, create a new matrix of the expected values from A automatically. does all the calculations for you. So you do SAT, test. It is. Thank you, calculator. Chi-squared test, not GOF. That is alpha C before alpha D. Observe, make sure we have our, uh, our original data in matrix A. Expected will be created for us. We calculate, and we get our p-value, 0 0.0029. Why? I literally just went, okay. Now, this is good to have. This is the correct number. What's great is that we can go back and notice matrix B is now a 2 by 2. And watch when I go to edit it, I see that 33.065 value that we already calculated. So it calculated all four of those values for us. We didn't have to even do this. Okay. Now you will be asked to find the expected values, however. So you need to understand the formula. You'll just have to do it once or twice, but not four or eight or ten times. Okay. Now, again, for our null hypothesis, there is no association. Our alternative is there is. Now, let's be specific, no association between what? <laughs> yeah, pet ownership and death by coronary heart disease. The alternative is that there is an association between pet ownership and death by heart disease. Well, we got a small p-value, definitely smaller than a significance level, like 
0.05. Small p-value means what? Reject what? Reject the null hypothesis, which means we favor our alternative. There is an association between uh, pet ownership. Exactly. We reject the claim that there's no association, which means we are favoring that there is an association between the two. And that's what I kind of want you to write. I don't want you to write just reject HO. I would say, I would want you to write there is an association between pet ownership and heart disease death rate. Okay? That's fine. You know, if you write the correct null hypothesis and then just say is an association, use like tick marks, whatever, that's fine. Okay? Well, let's see if there's an association between age and uh, how you feel you are looking. Now, what they provided for you was these total columns. Well, that's adding our rows and adding our columns. When we enter in our data, we don't want the total columns. They're just to help us find specific expected values if we wanted to find them by hand. Do we want to find them by hand? No, our calculator will do it for us. However, Look at this. They want us to find, show the work on getting the expected value for the number of people over 50 who are somewhat satisfied with their overall appearance. So you're asked to show the work for one expected value. The remainder you can let the calculator do for you. That is the over 50 row, somewhat satisfied column, divided by the total. So you're going to be looking at the 312, times the 403 divided by the 747, okay? But that's just a one-off calculation. Your biggest calculations are just entering this into your matrix, running your chi-square test, and looking at your p-value. That's it. No, it's, this is you. Go. Find your p-values. Except for the totals. Remember rows by columns? Three rows. One, two, three. One, two, three, four columns. Nope. It will automatically write over B. As long as it's not the same... Um, size, I believe. It actually just might write over it every time.
0.0267. Anybody else get that? Yeah, all right, good. Okay, make sure you do everything else, include writing the hypothesis, the alternative hypothesis, doing the calculation, sorry, to find the expected value, then writing your conclusion. Mm. Small p value, reject the null, favor the alternative. Right? Yep. Yep, make sure we write our conclusion. What? You're good. You found your p-value. That's fine. This is just a one-off calculation. You have your p-value. That will now lead you to the correct conclusion. Good. We're all getting the correct p-value. Everything good? You got that? That's good. I just got to make the correct conclusion. Remember, small p-values mean we reject the null hypothesis. We'll favor our alternative hypothesis. Yep. Yep. So you gotta you gotta plug in the information into your matrix. Uh, I put it in the I just, I the, the information. Oh, so it's in C. Okay. Well, good. It's in C. So let's go stat test. Let's make sure we use C. I didn't get rid of A. Uh, we have to go into matrix C. Okay, and then I think it will. Yep, it will rewrite over B. Okay. Small p value means what, Ms. Adams? That we reject the null. Exactly. Reject the null. Which means we are favoring the alternative, which means we say there is an association between age and personal appearance satisfaction. Okay, all that they wanted here to put the expected uh, expected value uh, for people over 50 who are somewhat satisfied is 312 times 403 divided by 747. What did you get for that? 168.32. Okay, good. What you could have done just to check your work is you could have gone into your matrix B and have seen that value in the correct spot, which would have been right here. So if you guys want to check that, go into matrix B, look at the third row, second column, you should see the 168.32. And this, I didn't have it because I didn't enter in the information, but go ahead and check. I had no, why didn't you get it? I see the 168.32. Are you sure? <laughs> Check your values. Miss Man, do I have to pick on you like I do Ms. Mr. Englander now? No, oh, but I, I do it. I just have really thought. Can I pay attention? You should be checking 
your matrix B. Okay, you already did. All right, good job. All right, let's start on our homework. That's it. Uh, no, I have to grade.